Now it's time to decide uh, what to make the camber the thickness of your wing. Um, I find that these shorter cord ones like this one and the one in the middle that are about five or six inches cord, two thicknesses of foam board will suffice whether you choose to do it without a spar or whether you want to leave a cavity here or a channel that will accept later a uh, carbon arrow shaft. With a larger cord like this one on the bottom that's seven, which is like the one we're making in this video, I find that usually three sections of uh, foam board, whether it's you leave the channel or whether you just stack up three uh, pieces of foam board to cause to allow that thickness, either works fine. But I'm going to build one with a spar that's got a seven inch cord here. Line up correctly. But in the wing I'm about to make, I'm going to use uh, two one inch strips and two two and a quarter inch strips to, to match those plus a space in between for the uh, carbon fiber spar. So in this case I'm going to use a wing former, the channel for the spar and another wing former starting one inch back from the leading edge, or actually from where the paper ends, which ends up being a little bit further back than the leading edge. So I'm using this one inch strip as just a spacer to index where to put the glue. And I'll put a thin layer of glue on the bottom. And here's my two and a quarter inch strip. Placed one inch back. And then I'll put a strip of glue in the front, put a one inch strip, and I'll use this carbon spar to establish its own channel in there. Just be sure to leave an end hanging out so you've got something to grab. And that's all over with and then just put the glue behind the spar but not touching it and put your other one inch strip right behind it and sort of snug it up to the to the spar and then we're going to put this one on top and since the carbon spar is a little thicker than the foam board it's usually necessary to glue the one surface down first and I'm going to do the front like this And let that fully cool and harden. And then just to give the top of this piece a little more flexibility to curve over the top of the spar and also to conform to the inside of the upper surface of the wing, when that's folded down is I'll peel that piece off so that allows it to curve down a little bit. Now this front part is securely glued down and I'll just put a little glue in the in the rear between the formers there and hold that down okay the glue is hardened in all three of those sections and so you can see it imparts a little bit of a curve to this top one which when the top surface of the wing is folded over it accepts that curve as well if you've done it right and haven't glued in your spar, you will be able to turn it and, and pull it out some, but always be sure to leave enough for you to grab and pull out because it's, it can be pretty tight. So now I'm going to apply the glue along here to seal down the top surface of the wing to the former. If you're, if you're advanced, you can put your servos in now and just attach them through the bottom surface of the wing and then run the wires and then glue that down and you'll end up with a smaller hole later, but I just like to kind of put the wing together and I'm not exactly sure where the servers are going to go until I'm ready to assemble the aircraft. And here I'll put a thin bead of glue on the top. Again, this is not a strength thing. You're just tacking this down. So now we've got this. This portion is glued and we're ready to bend this down and put glue along the trailing edge between the two surfaces, upper and lower. And if there's one 
point in this operation where you need the really the right amount of glue, it's this one because you want enough glue to hold this securely and also to bleed right up to the edge of the foam board, but not to have an excessive amount squeeze out. And also, if you're going to use something like this or a piece of wood to hold it down, this is the place where you'll, you'll want to use it because this is the place you want it most secure. Okay, now we have this with the trailing edge now securely glued. Now all of this you have to work with for a control surface. You can make up to a, I guess a four inch flap or aileron or whatever you like. Um, I'm going to trim that down to, to two inches. And my straight edge here happens to be two inches wide. So I'm just going to butt that right up against the trailing edge of the airfoil itself and 